So, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to factor quadratic expressions of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to 1. So, for example, suppose you wish to factor the expression 6x squared minus x and then minus, say, 12. As you can see, it follows ax squared plus bx plus c. And the a is not 1, but it's a 6. Okay? Before we learn how to factor expressions like this, and when we factor it into a binomial factors, into binomial factors, we simply get the x and x, and then this is 2 and 2 coming from the 4. Now, the, the method that we will be using here somehow similar to how we factor expressions like this but this time you need to consider the value 6 as well or any coefficient given for the x squared okay so I'll, I'll show you one technique and then another technique so that you can have an option on how to factor this kind of expressions depending on how you will be able to follow uh, the given technique so that's I think it's not like you will be forced to use both of them, but you just have to select which of the two is more convenient for you to use. Okay, so in math, it's like that. We, we don't force like a specific solution. A problem can be solved in different ways, and well, it depends on the solver uh, which method will he find uh, convenient for him. Okay, so method number one, so let's take 6x squared minus x minus 12. The method number one is more of a trial and error. And it will depend on how you select numbers, combination of numbers. Okay. Now, first thing to check before we do uh, or before we find the binomial factors is, is to check whether the given quadratic expression has the highest common factor or has one as the highest common factor meaning for the three terms what is the highest number that can be um, or is a divisor of the three terms in this case this is a 6 this is 1x so minus x means 1x and then minus 12 so the only common factor is 1 when the highest common factor is 1 then you can proceed to factoring the expression into two binomial factors Okay, similar to how we factor expressions like x squared plus 4x plus 4, the first terms will just be factors of 6x squared. The last terms of the binomial will be the factors of negative 12. Okay, so always focus on the first term here and on the third term to get the last term of the binomial factors. So let's start with the first terms. So they will come from 6x squared. So since this is a trial and error, just get the possible combination of numbers that will lead you to a 6x squared. Well, I can think of 3x and 2x. Well, there's also 6x and x. Note that you can have negative 3x and negative 2x, but do not, for me, do not get these negative values, okay? It will, ju it will just make it complex. So focus on the positive factors of 6x squared. Okay, so again, this is a trial and error. So in a trial and error, you have to try pairs of factors, 3x and then 2x. So you have to fill up the first terms. So after... Selecting a pair of expressions for 6x squared, you go now to the negative 12. So for negative 12, so think of factors of negative 12. So we can have, say, negative 12 can be taken from, there are many combinations, 3 times 4, negative 3 times 4, or maybe 3 times negative 4. You can have 
6 times 2, 1 is negative, or positive 6 times negative 2. You can also have 12 and 1, 1 is negative, so 12 and then negative 1. Okay, so note how I how I considered the minus sign on the 12. Okay, a negative 12 will have two factors within, wherein one is positive and the other is negative. Okay, so this is one of the disadvantage of a trial and error because you have to, you, we will get to have many options. And if you have many options, it means many tries. Now, if you're very uh, lucky, upon selecting a pair of numbers, sometimes it's already the correct combination of numbers if you're lucky. Otherwise, you just have you need to um, change the combinations and put the next pair of factors. Okay. So suppose we decided to use three and four. Now this is my way of putting the numbers. Okay. Although I know that it's already a negative and a positive, what you have to do is just place the numbers, place the numbers without the sign. I'm sorry, this is 4. But I they, again, I know already that one of them will be negative and the other is positive. Before you put the sign, this is what you need to do. If you remember the FOIL method, you have the inner and the outer to, to, to multiply. And that inner and outer product, the sum of those inner and outer should actually be equal to the middle term of the given quadratic expression. Okay, again, the outer product and the inner product. This is the this is the inner product and this is the outer product. So this is 6x and this is 12x. The sum and difference or difference of the resulting product should be about 1x, in this case negative x. But upon checking 12 and 6, that's 18. 12 plus 6 is 18. 12 minus 6 is 6. So it seems like we didn't get the correct combination of numbers. Okay, again, this is trial and error. You try, it could be a mistake. Okay, but what do you need to do when the, when the first, when your first choice will not work? Okay. What I will suggest, do not change the pair of numbers, but instead, you have to just change their position. Okay? So, I'll put the 4 and I'll put the 3. Okay? And then we will be testing again. The inner and the outer. The inner now is 8x. 4 times 2x is 8x. The outer is 3 times 3x is 9x. 9 plus 8 is 17. But 9 minus 8 is 1. And we need a 1, a 1x. So it seems like, okay, or actually we were able to get the correct combination numbers. Now is the time to place the signs of 4 and 3. If you wish to get a negative x, and the negative x will come from the sum of 9x and 8x. Then you will be able to see that it should be the 9x that is negative. And note that the 9x will come from the outer product. So if this is positive 3x, then this 3 must be negative so that their product is negative 9x. And immediately you can conclude that 4 must be positive because again to have a negative 12 the two numbers for the two numbers one should be negative and one is positive so we check 3x and 2x is 6x squared the inner and outer will become negative x the positive 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 so we were able to find the correct factors of the given expression and it is 3x plus 4 and 2x minus 3 okay so this is trial and error 
So expect that you will get a combination that will not work. That is why it's called a trial and error. But if you will do it systematically, you place a value systematically, then you you, you get a if you're you're if you're lucky then you can get the the correct combination of factors immediately. Okay, so there's an advantage and disadvantage, and I think the disadvantage of this method is you will have to get you will get different like you will have many options okay and you just you really have to try those uh, combination of numbers okay so that's for the trial and error now let's go to the second method which is the AC method okay let's use the same given expression 6x squared minus x minus 12 okay this time by the AC method okay for the AC method it's called an AC method because we will utilize the value of A and the C now what are the A and the C this is the A and this is the C so first thing that you have to do is to multiply A and C because AC means multiplication 6 times negative 12 and this is negative 72 Okay, upon getting negative 72, you have to break negative 72 into two factors and think about the middle term. The sum of those factors will be, or the difference of those factors should be, negative 1. Well, 72 is 9 times 8. And the difference of 9 and 8 is 1. But since I need a negative 1, uh, will make 9 to be negative because negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1 okay so what will I do with these numbers okay this is what you will do after note that this is the given expression okay this number 2 is your guide on how to split the negative x and this is how you split the negative x minus 9x plus 8x and then you have minus 12 so note how I use negative 9 and positive 8 and negative 9x plus 8x is actually negative x so basically they're the same okay after that what you need to do is to consider the first and the second and the second and the third and the fourth find a common factor for the first and second and then a common factor for the third and fourth so if you take a look at 6x squared minus 9x you should be able to see that the common factor is 3x and this will leave you 2x minus 3 right and then when you focus on 8x minus 12 the common factor is 4 if you factor out 4 it becomes 2x minus 3 now take a look at 2x minus 3 on the first and 2x minus 3 on the second. See, it's a common factor now. So after having this expression in number 5, the next step is to factor out the common factor for these two groups. Okay, This is first group and this is second group. The common factor is 2x minus 3. So factor it out to so get this out get this out so it's 2x minus 3 when you factor out the 2x minus 3 you notice that you have 3x and you also have plus 4 and that's basically the factor or the set of factors for the given expression 6x squared minus x minus 12 six steps and if you take a look at our solution although they're not in the same order we were able to get the factors of the given quadratic expression so see, that, that's how you factor quadratic expression, either by trial and error, and then check the proper combination of numbers, or you can utilize the AC method and find, like, find the AC and then get some factors of the AC to rewrite the expression. Okay, so the best thing to use this video is to watch it again. 
when you think something is not clear. Sometimes it is in the second time that, that uh, you will understand it better. Okay, so I'll try to show more examples in the other videos, but this is the overview of the two methods on, on factoring quadratic expressions when the value base is no longer 1. Okay, so that's by trial and error and by the AC method. Okay, that's it.